Hi everybody and welcome to NAC 3D Designs. Today we're going to take the power switch off the back corner of our printer and mount it right here on the front of our bottom tray. So let's get started. Alright so the first thing we need to do is remove the switch from the back of the chassis. Just unplug both wires from the back of the switch. Try and pinch in a little bit on the side tabs and get a little push forward. And out comes the switch. All right, so the next thing we need to do, we need to go ahead and prep right here for drilling holes to cut the hole out on this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover this all in painter's tape. So we protect the surface from getting scratched and give us something a little easier to draw on with a pencil for marking out the hole. Just like that. Now the next thing we do is we need to measure out an inch and seven eighths from this seam. Now I usually line the tab up on the outside edge here, just like that, right at the far end of the radius. And I need to measure a half inch down from the top. Now I have my starting corner for where the switch will go. Now I'm just going to use the switch to mark the height and the width for the hole that needs to go in there. Now try to draw your square a little on the small side. It's better to have to file it out a little bit. Then cut it too big and then you see the opening behind the little tab on the switch. So there's the, the hole cut out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my drill to drill out the four corners of that. To give me a marking point where I'm going to try and score it with the Dremel. So you have marked out the four corners with the drill. Now I'm just going to take my Dremel with my carbide cutting blade and score those edges so I can hopefully break this out easy. Probably should wear safety glasses or in my case reading glasses so I can see closer. Now this is a time where I wish I had a bit that was burned down a little bit smaller. Would it let me cut a little bit deeper? Usually you can get it far enough though that you can slide a exacto knife through. Hopefully not leave the blade in when you go to pull out. Now, as you can see, we also have some plastic back in here that's going to be in our way. A pair of needle nose usually works really good. Just reach down in there, break out some of this. Doesn't have to be pretty. Nobody's going to see this. It's all going to be under the covers.
And if you can see here, there is actually a path you can follow from back here by the power supply through here and it zigzags under and through and comes all the way along through here and makes it almost all the way to where the power the power switch is going to go. There's going to break out one spot here so we can finish feeding the wires through. Now, it usually comes out a little cleaner if you go ahead and score it with the cutting wheel. Now we just need to finish cutting out. my flathead screwdrivers. Usually, if you scored it good enough, you can pop it right out. Now we just need to clean the hole up and make it fit right. Okay, so you can see I'm halfway there. The back part slides into the hole. I just gotta get my width set right. Just gotta shave a little bit more off of here. All right, so now it looks like it's gonna fit in there. Go ahead and pull off my tape. I'm just going to clean up my hole a little bit with my file. All right. And there's our hole. It's not pretty, but the switch does fit nicely in it. And it snaps in place and you can't see around it. Now, as you can see, I need to cut that opening a little bit further to the side than I did. So we're gonna break out a little bit more right here. Gotta have room for the connectors to plug onto the back of that switch. So now we get a straight shot at the back of that switch. The only other thing we're going to do while we've got this here is if you remember when we unplugged our Z axis motor, the wire went down through here and popped back up on this side to plug into that. And there was really no way to get this bottom off without accidentally unplugging the Z axis. I have yet to figure out why they think this plastic piece needs to be right here. So I'm going to cut out a section right here so when we put it together we can leave the Z axis plugged in and the wire is just going to lay right through that opening. So, there. And now you can see we got a nice open area for that wiring to feed through. Alright, so for the next part of this upgrade. We're going to need the connectors that used to plug into our switch. I went ahead and cut them off, left about an inch of wire on the end of each one of them. And you're going to need a scrap of that red and black wire that came with your E3D hot ends. You should have plenty of pieces of this laying around. Uh, we're going to basically feed it from the front to the back here. And then we're going to solder one half of a JST connector onto it. 
And then we'll put the other half onto the power supply. That way, if you ever need to take the bottom tray back off, it's a quick disconnect instead of having to solder and unsolder something or try and unfeed this wire, which won't be possible. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to strip the ends of these off and tin them. Strip the ends on here. We'll solder this on. We'll insert our switch and then we'll feed it down this trail to the back, figure out our length and add on one half of our connector. So we have all four wires tinned. Now I'm gonna go ahead and slide a couple pieces of heat shrink over the ends of the wires. And then I'm gonna connect each of our wires to, for our connectors to the wire. Now we're ready to insert our switch. It's easier to feed the wires through and plug them into the switch before you put it in. I'm going to tuck it through this area. You've got these little hook down tabs. Try and get it down under those. Now here's the tricky part. You've got to go down under to get to this one hole here. And we've got our wire fed all the way through. Now clearly we don't need all this distance because we do have a connector here and we're also going to have a connector on the other end. I usually just take it to about, loop it back to about that hole. And uh, put these wires. Now we're going to strip these wires down and strip one end of this down, tin them, and do the same thing and solder our connector on. Just for common sense sake, we are going to attach red to red and black to black. Now we're ready. Put the other connector on to our power supply and put our, well, I'm not quite ready to put our tray in place because we do need to do a little bit of trimming on the main chassis. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and peel these wires away from the power supply, strip the ends, and solder on the other half of our JST connector. Just peel the tape off the top of it here. You feed your wire back where you can get to it. Just repeat, we're going to tin the wires and then solder them together. And I'm going to connect black to black and red to green. So now this is ready to connect to our bottom tray. All we have left to do now is trim the front of this chassis where the switch is going to go. All right, so for the next part of this, what we're going to do is we're going to line up our tray. The corners of the front basically line up with the corners of your uprights here. We're just going to make some light marks on either side of the switch so we know we're going to clear. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come about an eighth of an inch down, 
across the front here. We're going to trim all this out so that our switch can go in through. And now we have our cutout. All right, so the last thing we need to do is drop our printer down on the base tray here. Now the hardest part of this is we'll need to take this wire, and if you see here, there is a small gap between the bottom tray and the back plate of the printer chassis. Wire is gonna come up between the two of these and through this opening right here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift this up, we're gonna set it on here, but we're gonna set it off kilter and a little bit forward so we can feed this wire through. Now that I've got it in place, I'm gonna feed that wire under the chassis and up through that opening. Now that we've got the wire through the opening, we can go ahead and set the printer in its proper place and let it seed into the base. All that's left to do now is put the four screws in the corners and our base is mounted and our on off switch is in place. All right, so I've gone ahead and dug out four of the 12 millimeter thread cutting screws. I'm gonna go ahead and insert one in this corner right here. And we're going to go ahead and repeat that for the other three corners. Now to put this back right corner in, you're going to need to take the screw out that's holding your cable chain mount in place. Just slide the cable chain to the side long enough to put your screw in and then put the cable chain back in place. And wait, I almost forgot. We still have to plug in the power supply. Didn't you know everything I have spins? All right, so cable coming from the front, from the power supply, cable coming from the front switch. Now it's hooked up and ready to go. Then just tuck those wires in nice and neat right there. Now we're ready to start putting up other plastic, but that's for another episode. All right, so that wraps up relocating our on-off switch to the front of our base panel and installing our base panel. In our next episode, we're going to go ahead and install our Z anti-wobble and a flex coupler. Hopefully, this will get rid of some of those Z wobble lines we see in some of our larger prints. If you like what I'm doing here, subscribe to the channel, ring that bell for updates. And if you want to help support the channel, there is a wish list and PayPal me link at the bottom of the description. And remember, if it ain't broke, upgrade it. We'll see you next time.